All right, let's talk about sharpening, which is something I feel most people don't actually do. Or if you wanna make your photos have a little bit more detail, instead of using sharpening tools, I feel a lot of people like to use, uh, let's do use this photo as an example, just because I, oh, I assumed I used this clarity slider. Because so often do I see people using this slider, the clarity, to improve sh uh, overall sharpness rather than actual sharpening tool. Because clarity is really, that, that's an Instagram tool. So if you take it here, this photo kind of has that effect because, um, you know, of how I, how I use the other tools. But what it does is, is basically it will find bright and dark areas and just kind of exaggerate that. So that's why I kind of get that detail kind of grunge, intense look, very popular with sports photography, kind of gives it um, some dynamic. Um, since this photo is already so detail oriented, you can see how it looks awful when I apply it. And when I lower it, it just looks like some weird face blurring. So let's not uh, use clarity uh, when we want to sharpen our photos. Um, Sharpening is really used for when you're changing the output source. So for an example, if I wanted to print this photo, my computer screen is very low resolution compared to a printer. Or when I'm posting Instagram, my phone screen has a much higher resolution than that of most iPhones. And my iPhone has much more higher resolution than the screen. So you can see how things are going. We're changing the output uh, source. So we're going from a raw file to either a JPEG or something else. So for example, this photo is probably 3000 pixels wide, um, where if you're exporting to Instagram, um, I think 1000 pixels about more or less is, is really what's going across the screen. So how do you maintain sharpness when changing all of this? Lightroom does a very good job doing things automatically, but if you want to get that extra bit of clarity, um, let's dig into sharpening. So it, they tuck it way down at the bottom, um, but it's something that I feel that you should try to have some presets, at least when you're exporting. It's, it's Your photos are just gonna have a little bit extra punch, people will notice. So this photo um, is actually very heavily processed, so I don't wanna use that as an example. Um, what I would like to use is actually a photo, just basically a quick snapshot I took on my day off. So let's use this one. This photo, lots of detail. And what I mean by that is we got all these fine lines, okay? Kind of like if you're doing macro work, um, you wanna have all the detail in like uh, a flower, a watch, or whichever, where if you're working with people, you don't want um, to have as much detail actually, because then you're gonna be sharpening people's pores and their skin, and you n no one wants that. And again, clients will notice that as well. So this is a very detailed shot because you got all these fine lines. Um, so, this photo is pretty sharp as is. I'm at 30th of a second, so I'm pretty fortunate. Nothing's windy, so we have all sharpness here. Um, because sharpening will not fix motion blur. In fact, I have another shot. Um, this one here right next to it. This shot taken a little bit later. I uh, have some mild adjustments, so that's why it's got a little bit of punch to it, but no sharpening applied. So if you take a look here, the tree, very sharp, but the plane, as it's flying about at least 300 miles an hour close to an airport, so it's not at uh, cruising speed, it's blurry because it's just flying by. Um, at 50th of a second. So that's why even if you have a relatively fast shutter speed, if you're using a, a stabilized lens, 50th may feel plenty fast, you're, you're, you're still gonna have motion blur in the scenery. So if I try to sharpen this, this plane will not get sharper, but it will get me all the detail here. So let's jump right in. We have four sliders, and I'm guessing most people don't actually know the difference, because I didn't until about a year ago. So first, the amount, this slider 
it's just a volume knob, it's a gain knob. So if I turn it to zero, this is the, the natural sharpness my lens gives me. And as I drag it up, I'm just getting more sharpness. And you can see on the more end, you notice this on a lot of Instagram posts, you kind of get this weird grain. I don't know, it looks like grain, but it, if you zoom in more, it just looks awful. I don't like it. So make sure, this, this is kind of the overall look you want to avoid. Um, so let's just put him back in the middle. The next one is radius. So the radius, that is um, basically a mathematical term. There's really no, there's no fancy algorithms involved here. It's just um, when you're sharpening an object, it's how, how, hmm. I guess we're gonna have to back up and explain what sharpening's really doing. So if you are, ever watch an artist draw something, they're going to, to use pencil to very lightly draw in, um, you know, the subject. So you might very lightly trace things out. And after a while, once they get the overall um, object they like, they're going to darken in lines. And that bring makes the image pop on paper, it looks sharper. And that's exactly what we're doing here on the screen, it's going to be looking sharper. So what the radius is doing is it's effectively darkening in lines and at the same time um, adding a little bit of white space right next to that kind of gives you this little bit of micro contrast a lot of people talk about online um, so it's going to be um, effectively putting a little bit a little halo around every edge so i'm going to zoom in a 400 percent and we can see this if i drag this up you can see here on on each thing you can see that little halo so we on, the, on a detail shot like this, I like to have a very small radius because um, each, each little object here isn't very big. If I was to be working with people, I don't want it to be sharpening each and every skin cell or every, every uh, skin imperfection. So I'm gonna want a larger radius um, just because um, I, know I, I don't wanna be focusing on that. And speaking of um, detail, in the photo, that's that directly correlates to this. So again, just like radius, there's no there's no fancy algorithms. It's just basic math. So with detail here, it's going to be looking for and um, modifying just the lines. So we can see an example of this. If we go, I'll make a very small detail. I got to bring my radius back to where uh, where I like it. Very on the, on the lower end. Um, you can see it's it's just giving a, me a slightly harsher. Um, it's it's giving me a, a harsher sharpening. So again, great for high contrast, very detailed shots. So again, um, I don't want to sharpen this image too much. So I like to I, I want to leave it right around down here. Now the last one, masking. This is where we're we're getting some Adobe magic. There is there is um, you know it's it's going to vary a little bit per, on each image because we have those algorithms. So the masking um, is going the the program is going to look at kind of the detail aspects like here in the branches, and it's going to start to exclude kind of your more gradual gradients because say we go into the sky and I turn off my sharpening. You can see it's nice and smooth. We got a little bit of image noise, but it's nice and smooth. But with my sharpening turned on, we get that no we get some artificial noise. You can see, you know, it's it just brings out some detail that doesn't really need to be there. So with masking, it's going to start to ignore that. So you can see very quickly it's bringing that bringing that uh, sharpness kind of it's just it's just going to be ignoring it a great way to look at this is actually one of lightroom's my favorite features of lightroom in general hit the option key and when you're moving a lot of the sliders you can see how it's changing how the functions are going to be working your 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 well i don't know what the option button really means but um you can see each tool is giving you a slightly different view. On the amount, it just makes it black and white because you're not affecting color with sharpening. But 
um, with the masking, you can see right now, every part of the image is gonna be affected. And as I increase it, you can see those algorithms are starting to ignore different parts of the image. And if I go all the way to the end, it's actually starting to cut out things that should be sharpened. So I mentioned it's not gonna be able to sharpen that blurry airplane. Now the computer is gonna do its best to try, but what it guesses isn't really gonna do anything. You can see, um, you know, it, it found the edges of the plane, but I'm not, I'm not actually making it any sharper. So you can go back and take a look at this again. Um, whoops. Now I'm at 4.1, so if you're looking at this on your phone or whichever, you know, no one's actually gonna be pixel peeping this bad, but it's, it's great for sharpening. So um, your detail, like I said, that's just gonna be how dark is, are you gonna be shading in? Um, so when I drag it more, you can see it almost looks like kind of JPEG compression, but that's just all it's doing. It's just darkening in certain lines. And the radius, that's just how, how, how thick are those lines going to be. So if you go too far, you're going to get that haloing because it's, it's trying to add um, that edge over too broad of an area. So for a detail shot, I always make the radius. So I want to explain, you know, a sharpening, more is more here and less is less. But with the radius, you're not getting a sharper image by bringing it to the right and less to the left, it's purely to do with what type of shot you're doing. That goes again with the detail. You're not getting more sharpness. It's, you know, you're not increasing detail with this. It's just Lightroom looking for um, the lines in the shot. So really when it's, it's you wanna make sure that yes, your your mount will give you more sharpening, but the the sliders below it, it's moving these doesn't necessarily mean your, sh your image is going to be sharper on the right. You can still have a very, a lot of sharpening with a very low radius. So that's my quick example. And I want to do one more example. Um, let's do, let's go back to this one. So we can just go overview really quick. We're going to jump into, I'm only going to do, uh, 200% that way it's not too fuzzy but this image is already pretty sharp but when you're exporting for prints or or Instagram I want a little bit of extra punch because my computer screen's nice and large but your iPhone screen you know it's it's what two inches wide really so you might want to get that little bit extra kick when you're exporting so you might want to have slightly different export presets. We can get into that later, but if we go back into the develop module, um, I'm going to give it a little bit extra sharpening. And you can use this little uh, window here kind of as a, as a preview. I'd rather just zoom the whole image in. But it is nice because if you click this uh, box here, and then I click anywhere else, you can see it's following my mouse. So say I want to, you know, focus on this part right here, I can still zoom in and make sure that as I'm making my adjustments, something somewhere else on the image doesn't get out of whack. So I'm gonna have a nice low radius because again, detail image. Um, and the same thing with the detail slider. So since I'm exporting to Instagram in this case, I can get away with a more jaggedy edge because no one's gonna be seeing as close as you can on the screen. So it might look bad to you, but your clients are not gonna notice. In fact, they're probably gonna think it looks better. And we're gonna move the mask, and I bring it quite a bit up because so much of this image is just emptiness. So I'm gonna use my option function again. You know, I don't need to be a, uh, sharpening the whole image. I only want, well, that looks pretty good to me. And if you're always in a quick, if you're in a hurry, you don't really want to, uh, um, you know, zoom in and out. If you want to be, you know, let's sharpen this image in about 10 seconds, okay? So develop, sharpening right here. I'm gonna hit hold down function. This just gives me black and white. Okay, that looks pretty good. Holding down option radius. I'm gonna have, um, I'm gonna just eyeball it. That looks pretty good. Now again, detail, 
just move it back and forth just kind of stop where it feels good feels good right there now masking I'm just gonna make sure that the sky is black the trees are white done 10 seconds and if you take a quick look uh, if I if we bring the sharpening all the way to zero I get a nice big kick so I'm happy so I hope that that was very useful that's a quick introduction to sharpening and we can talk about how your noise reduction tool can affect sharpening later. I always turn my noise reduction off because uh, they, they do correlate. So we can get into that later. So thank you so much. And that was your introduction to sharpening.